Hey, what's going on guys? So today we're taking a look at another premium Bandai Master Grade here. This is the Riga Z Unicorn version. So basically, not too long ago we had the Riga Z come out as a P Bandai kit, the Riga Z Custom I should say. And what that did was take an old Master Grade, which was pretty widely considered to be one of the worst Master Grades out there, and did a ton of revamping on it, basically turning it into like a version 1.5, because it still had some parts of the original kit, so it wasn't a complete version 2.0. So sort of similar to what Bandai has done with the Master Grade Dom, recently creating the Premium Bandai Dwaj and Dwaj Kai. These Premium Bandai version 1.5 Master Grades are usually pretty awesome, so I'm looking forward to this version as well. So this version of the Riga Z, well it's the unicorn version and it's going to be different colors from the original design. Uh, I think just design wise this one is a little bit more closer to the original Riga Z design compared to the Riga Z Custom which had a little bit more different parts on it of course, but this one still should be pretty awesome. I think it's probably going to be using about the same amount of parts from the original kit. So it's going to still have a lot of new parts in here. As you can see, it's in this very large size box in the same monochrome color there being a P-Bandai kit, of course. But just here on the front, it is looking pretty awesome. You can see it's sporting a much smaller backpack, but I believe we do still have all the parts to make the larger backpack, which is just going to be like a separate flyer bit thing that you can uh, just have separately, or you should be able to mount it onto its backpack as well. We'll see in a moment once we get it all opened up, so let's just take a look around the box here quickly. With it being a Peen Bandai kit, it's not going to be too much to see around the box here, just the name on that side and the other side, and then on the top and bottom, just the same thing, basically what's on the front of the box. So not much really to see here on the outside. Let's just get it opened up. And right off the bat, with this being a P Bandai kit, it's nice. We've got some water slide decals, so those are looking good. We'll take a closer look here in a moment. Uh, but just in case you couldn't tell from the box art, because I guess you can't tell because it's in monochrome, but uh, the color scheme for this is basically like gray and dark blue. Uh, as with many things, the unicorn version color scheme for this uh, is going to be a little bit more muted, a little bit more sort of utilitarian or like militaristic looking. Not quite as bright and colorful as the original design. So you can get a good sense of that here in the gray, actually looking a little bit slightly more greenish, bluish gray than I was expecting. I was expecting it to be a little bit more neutral. But if we make our way down here to the manual, let's just take a look at that. So there's the color scheme there. You can see the cover art, the box art there in full color. So it does look really nice. We'll take a look around here to the back of the manual. And just once again, you can see it has the smaller type backpack there. Uh, but which is just, uh, this is going to be the decal guide. So where all the decals are going to be going around on the kit there. And then we do have our color guide down here at the bottom. So it looks like this is the RLM 65 gray light blue and then uh, and then 40% white as well. So it's just a much lighter version of RLM light blue. So interesting there for that color. Let's get the manual opened up. With this being P-Bandai kits, you know, typically in Master Grades, we'll see some other different photos or stuff. Uh, interesting to see inside the manual. But with a P-Bandai kit, it's not going to be the case. So we just get right into the parts list here. And you can see there's going to be plenty of leftover parts with it being a P-Bandai color color swap and also just being a 1.5 kit again essentially you have a lot of leftover parts there and so yeah we're gonna have a small mountain of leftover parts with this kit it looks like but here's just a look at everything you're gonna be building the main mobile suit the rifle the beam saber handles the shield and then the back weapon system will have there as well so just all goes through the construction of that nothing really too special to point out let's just let's go back here to the back there is about the transformation here as well as we saw with the Riga Z custom the transformation for this kit is pretty bogus looking it's not really cool at all but you can do it anyway so they're just showing how to do that and it looks like we have a little stand for this as well so that's an interesting improvement so that'll be interesting to see how that it looks like just two parts that just slot together to make her just a really simple stand for that so that's interesting all right so that'll be cool all right so first to have foil stickers here we only got a few as you can see just for the eyes and a couple of camera stickers and that's it but the waterside decal sheet looking very nice there with some markings mostly logo markings though you got the londo bell efsf markings there some numbers and stuff so looking very nice to have these we have a set of four screws here as well PC122 for a large sheet of polycaps here in gray. And this MP runner here, which is the set of hand parts that are originally used with the Master Grade Age kits and then also later used with the Master Grade Gym Sniper 2 and those different kits as well. All right, so runner A here is from the original Riga Z kit from 2001. As you can see, we got it in three colors. We got one clear part there for what looks like the eyes and some gray parts there for the weapons and a couple of inner frame kind of parts and then a bunch of yellow parts up there across the top. Runner B1 and B2 are molded together here. This is in a, that kind of dark blue color there for mostly backpack parts it looks like. Runner C here in that bluish gray color for like the main armor colors. You can see there's some parts on there for the head, some skirt, body parts and all that as well. 
Runner D, back to the dark blue color, and just on a side note, these are all still parts just from the original kit, no new parts quite yet. Runner E here, a bunch more of the armor parts there in the light bluish gray color, we've got two of this E runner. Runner F is getting into some parts there for the inner frame, as you can see it's just getting a kind of standard medium gray color, we've got two of this F runner as well. And the same thing here for Runner G, but one interesting thing to note about this is while Runner F and G for this kit are molded in this regular polystyrene plastic, I would tend to think that probably for the original kit that these were in ABS. I'm not sure, someone can correct me if I'm wrong about that, but at least in this case they're not ABS, they're just in regular polystyrene. We got Runner H1 here in a just kind of nice purple color, and then Runner H2 is those parts for the stand, so I guess these stand parts were included with the original kit, I just, again, I'm not really that familiar with the original kit to know that, but this runner is from 2001, so I guess these were something that were included with the original kit, but were unfortunately maybe not included with the Riga Z Custom, so that's kind of a shame. Runner I here, just a couple of big parts there for the shield and the backpack. Runner J, a few more parts in dark blue, it looks like mostly for the feet and a few other little bits on there, Runner J. Runner K, a few more inner frame parts here in gray. We got two of this K runner, and again, still just all from the original kit so far. And then runner L is a few more wing parts there for the backpack, it looks like. And for the last two of our runners from the original kit here, runner M is going to be our beam saber effect parts. And now for finally getting into the brand new parts specifically for this kit. So now we can kind of see and get an idea of what's going to be new with this kit. So you can see we're going to have new parts here for a rifle. This is runner XA, by the way. Also a new purple part there for the face, new clear parts for the head as well. So it looks like we're going to have an entirely new head. Runner XB is going to be a bunch of the new frame parts. So you can see we have new frame parts for around the waist and the body so that'll be good some good new parts there to improve the articulation here on runner xb and then runner xc as well some more new frame parts here for this and again it's all in poly polystyrene no abs it seems like with this kit runner xd some more new parts there for the head around the waist kind of torso section as well it looks like we have a new seated pilot figure in here as well same thing here for runner xe a few more new armor parts in that light bluish gray color we've got two of this xe runner and lastly runner xf here some new parts in the dark bluish color so some new parts there for the arms around the chest for the shield there it looks like as well and that's it so as you can see there's going to be a good amount of the old kits still going to be used with this but a lot of the most essential parts are going to be replaced with the new parts so again it's going to be very similar to the Riga Z custom but we'll take a look in the review how much they're exactly going to be similar or different anyway I'm gonna get this built up and then we'll see how it looks Alright guys, so here's how it's going to look, and I gotta say, putting this one together was not quite as interesting as the Riga Z Custom. Now, I've never built the original Master Grade Riga Z, uh, so I don't have that experience, but this one I could tell there was a lot more of the old kit in there, so that just made it feel slightly less exciting. Where building the Riga Z Custom, I could tell where there was a lot more new parts in there and so it just kind of had that little bit more of like an exciting feel to like oh this is all new even though it's, it's all new I mean even building the old kit would be new to me you guys get what I mean this one uh, has more old parts in there but it does still have a lot of new parts of course again where it counts and that's the important thing so either way it's still going to be a much better kit than the original and a very solid kit indeed actually so we'll take a look at everything in detail here in a moment but just I think the overall look it does look good um, uh, again, if you stood them side by side with this one and the original kit, you would definitely see this one still looks miles better even though it does still use a good handful of parts from the original kit. And while I think the color scheme is pretty cool, it's definitely going to look a lot better if you will at least put some matte coat on it. I mean, obviously painting it would be ideal, but if you're not going to paint, I would say at least, you know, prepare some matte coat, you know, do some panel lining, prepare some matte coat to spray on this, and it's going to look so much better than how it just looks. Just because with that kind of plasticky look of some of the parts, it's not really doing the kit any favors, but if you were to just wipe that out with some nice flat coat, it would definitely look a ton better. And of course, some panel lining and maybe some detail painting as well, even if you're not going to go the distance of fully painting the kit. Alright, so just to run through the accessories here really quick first, here is our 1 to 100 scale pilot figure, which is just kind of a generic pilot figure, honestly not a very good looking one either. And then we've got our two beam sabers, which are pretty cool. You have this clear yellow effect part, which is not your standard clear yellow effect part for a beam saber. It has this little bit more kind of flared end there where it comes out, so it looks really cool. And yeah, just a really interesting, unique handle that it's got for that. And we do also have the two inactive beam saber handles as well, which will fit up into the backpack for storage if you want, but you know, there's not really particularly any reason to store them up there unless you want it to be sort of accurate, I guess. And we've got a couple of different action base adapters here for attaching the kit onto an action base, either in mobile suit mode or in its transformed wave rider mode. 
And our hand option parts here, you've got them just the same as like with the Masquerade Gym Sniper 2 and other Masquerade recent gym variants. Uh, so these are just the same kind of swappable finger hands we have. You see have closed fist, open hands, trigger finger hands, and just regular weapon holding hands. Then we have the beam rifle, and this is actually a new beam rifle, but I wanted to show you this because you have uh, basically the parts of the old beam rifle in here as well, minus the end piece. So you use the end piece there, the barrel piece of the old kit, and for the main body you have new parts there for this. And you'll look at them side by side and they're almost the same, it's just that the new one is slightly larger. So it's a little bit longer and the details are a little bit different on it, but the new one definitely looks better about that. So it's not really all that different from the old one. So if you prefer a slightly smaller one, you could just build the old one if you wanted to. And then we've got the shield as well, which is pretty much all old here. So it's just got these bits there inside, the handle that will fold out and also the connector that will fold out there in that. We have a couple of connector pieces that will be used with the shield and also the backpack for when you've got this in its transformed mode and this little base part here from the original kit which you can use to just as like a simple stand for if you're displaying this in its transformed mode you can just rest it on top of this very simple just two part base here so it's a nice interesting thing if you want to display it in its transformed mode although I don't think you'll want to it doesn't look very good necessarily and then there's the back weapon system itself which is pretty cool and you, this is basically when you transform the kit it basically goes up inside this big hollow gap in there and it's yeah a lot different from what you got with the uh, Riga Z custom but I mean it does look pretty cool if you just ignore the fact that it's just got this big hollow space on the inside it still does have a pretty cool looking look to it I mean then you've got a bunch of leftover parts of course almost the entire head and torso pretty much is in leftover parts among a bunch of other things but one thing that I do also want to point out is that you get an extra set of antennas so you actually have two sets of these antennas there for the head as uh, one set is just going to be left over but I would definitely hang on to these because if you then later in the painting process or something if you accidentally break one you've got some spares so just hang on to those make sure you don't throw these away and so here are the two kits then side by side and I mean you, you can see why the Riga Z custom was maybe a little bit more of an exciting kit to build it's definitely got more of that sort of Gundam flair to it where the Riga Z here uh, the unicorn version is just very much like a sort of typical grunty sort of looking suit there so it doesn't quite have that same excitement to it but it, you know if you're a fan of the grunt style design like this then I mean that should be for you and I do like both definitely but I'm just meaning that I think these two variants of the same mobile suit definitely appeal to different tastes. Alright guys, I won't go through all of the articulation of this kit because overall, I mean, it's pretty basic uh, Master Grade articulation, everything that you would expect. There's just a few things that I will point out. Number one is that the head can go up to there, which is really quite nice because it's quite far. And on a similar note, we do also have a toe bend here, so if you guys are big fans of having a nice toe bend, though that's pretty much just for the articulation uh, for the transformation, just we'll point that out to you guys. Also, for the hip joint, the hip joints are unfortunately pretty much just ball and socket joints there, so outward movement is going to be pretty limited for those, and then also, once you attach the action base connector up there, it's going to actually limit your... Uh, articulation of the hips even further because then they can't go out quite as far because they're being blocked here by the action base if the connector if that's totally plugged onto there so once that's in place your outward movement of legs is pretty limited to about there and that's about it and then also for those interested of course the cockpit hatch does also open up and you have your seated pilot figure sitting up inside there as well and finally while this kit doesn't really have any seam lines pretty much anywhere on the kit it does have one set of seam lines that you will have to worry about here on the upper arm so that part of armor there around the upper arm will have a seam line down the front and back of that on both arms but other than that that's pretty much it and then here is how the kit is going to look transformed and i gotta say it does sort of slightly look a little bit better than the Riga Z custom transforms because of the back weapon system how it sort of all this sort of fits around the shoulders and torso so it sort of uh, does a good job of hiding the Gundam a little bit better than with the uh, Riga Z custom you had this all which was just like on the back of the Gundam and the Gundam was just kind of folded up at least in this case it sort of like goes around the Gundam a little bit or the mobile suit I should say sorry to uh, sort of hold it within this back weapon system so it's a little bit hidden in there anyway but so it doesn't look quite as bad still not really something that I would be too into but 
Uh, you have an action base connector that you can plug this onto up underneath the crotch there to plug this onto an action base like normal, but of course we have this stand here, so I want to just try that out here. But also just wanted to make sure I point this out to you guys. These little yellow vents here on the side fall out very easily. Uh, if I just am not careful with it, that will just slide out of there. So just make sure you add a little glue or something on there to make sure that that doesn't fall out on you and you get it lost or something. So then, but uh, there, as you can see right now, that little yellow vent on the side is sticking out because it's about to fall out of there. So just be careful with that. As we're actually balancing it on there, I gotta say a little bit kind of worried about that because it's resting on top of the shield and then like that connection base thing that you got there doesn't actually like there's no thing that actually plugs onto the shield in any way like a little tab or something that it plugs onto it just literally just rests on top of that thing and so it's a little bit of a balancing act because the shield is very curved so if you imagine just like setting a ball down how it is gonna roll around and that's basically what you've got there with the shield so you've got to make sure you've got it on a very flat surface and make sure you've got it balanced really well otherwise if you wanted to display it in its transform state like this say probably the best bet is to uh, just use this on a uh, action base. So at the end of the day guys, this is gonna be one of those P Bandai kits where I gotta say it's one that if you're a fan of the design, then I would definitely recommend getting the kit. It's, it's a very decent kit if you like the design. That said, if you're not really all that into the design and you're just kind of like, maybe you, you're a fan of like this type of kit generally, but you're not sure if this is really one you wanna pick up or not, then I would say probably pass on it. If you come across one, you know, for a good deal, a good price that you can't really pass up on, then, you know, that could be a different case. But generally, if it's not a design that you're really super into, I would say just pass and maybe consider getting the Riga Z Custom, if maybe that's something that's a little bit more your speed. I think in pretty much every way, the Riga Z Custom is just a better kit overall, objectively, but this one is not, I mean, this, this is sort of like in between the original and the Riga Z Custom. The Riga Z Custom had a lot more new parts and a much more exciting build. This one was not as many new parts and maybe not as exciting of a build unless, again, you're a big fan of grunt suits. But overall, I would not say this is a bad kit by any means. It's a, just a good, fine master grade kit that doesn't really do anything to stand out in any way. But, you know, if you like it, then it's going to be a cool addition to your collection for sure. So that's my thoughts on the kit. Let me know what you guys think there down in the comment section below. If you have any other further questions, of course, you can leave those there as well. And thank you guys all so much for watching. Thank you again, as always, to USA Gundam Store for their support as well. You guys, do show some love to USA Gundam Store. If you can, check the link down there in the video description and use my coupon code there, Zacharelius10, if you find anything that you like there. So I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one. Bye-bye.